Okay, rolling. Oh, it's been peaceful here in the five worlds, or is it six? For a dragon's age. We now have 12,000 treasure, or is it 14,000? What about this Ganasty Gnort character? Now, I understand he's found a magic spell to turn gems into warriors for his cause. I'll take that question. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Simple. He has been contained in a remote world and is no threat to the Dragon Kingdom. No threat! Besides, he is ugly. That does it. Looks like I've got some things to do. Welcome to Expo Divided. I'm Red Ocelot. I'm Jack Silverson, and this is one of the best fucking games on the PlayStation. Welcome to Spiral the Dragon. Yeah, we've already lost a 10 minute Thank record because of some technical issues, but hopefully it'll fix itself this time. Yep. Uh, we were talking about how this is an amazing video game. It is. It is the reason Jack is a gamer today. Yes, it is. This and Spyro 2. I love Spyro 2. Spyro's so good. I think the first game that really, really got me into gaming, like, really seriously, I've always had game consoles growing up, I've always been into games growing up, but the game that, like, kind of sparked my initial big interest in video games was probably Sonic Adventure, to be honest. Really? I was always kind of a casual gamer before I got the Dreamcast and Sonic Adventure, and after uh, getting those, I pretty much, you know, got into gaming, like, really hardcore. Yeah, I've, a, known, I've known since I was four years old, this is what I wanted my main hobby to be. Uh, Sonic Adventure was a game, was the first game where I started playing it, and I didn't want to turn it off. I didn't have memory card for the Dreamcast yet, so I refused to turn the console off for, like, a week. I'm really lucky that consoles were built better back then. Yeah. He's helping and protecting you. Keep an eye you know, for on all it. the uh, mechanical noise the Dreamcast makes, that make you makes it sound like it's about to break any second. It's very sturdy. Indeed. It's like oh, the, by the way, did I dropped my GameCube on the floor like really hard the other day? Picked it up, plugged it back in. Nothing. Nothing's wrong. It's perfectly fine. Oh, uh, by the way, that uh, that orange, that red dragon we were just talking to, the brown one. Yeah. Uh, that was Clancy Brown voicing him. Really? Yeah. Okay, uh, who was the voice actor who originally voiced Spyro? You mentioned that. Carlos Elagerke. Okay. Uh, and then the second voice actor for Sonic, uh, for, uh... Um, not Sonic, Spyro. Not Sonic. Uh... Sonic, uh, no, Spyro, Sonic didn't get a voice in 1998. Yeah. Spyro 2 and 3, uh... He was Tom Kenny. Tom Kenny. The voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. He's also in several... He's also the Ice King. Yep. In uh, Adventure Time. Tom Kenny is still very active today. Oh my gosh. he's. But well, before he's all that, he was Spyro the Dragon. He was Spyro, and nobody knew who he was. And then he did a little show that uh, some of you may have heard of called uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, which is uh, arguably one of the biggest cartoon franchises of the 90s. Uh, and actually, even today. I would say it's more of a franchise of the uh, 2000s. It because, is more of a 1000s because it's franchise. Because it may have started in 1998, but it really didn't really start getting traction until the second season. I remember when that show premiered. Remember when they used to do their big premieres of new shows after the Kids' Choice Awards I every do. year? That was one of them. Uh, SpongeBob uh, had been uh, had so many promos. You missed that. It had so many promos leading up to the Kids' Choice Awards. They were like, new cartoon that we're going to have, Spongebob. Oh, but again. most people who the were like super hardcore Nickelodeon fans Mountain. watched, uh, you are not yet ready, Spyro. what was it, Oh Yeah Cartoons? Uh, what a cartoon. What a cartoon. What a cartoon was like a show they would show like late night on Fridays to like show off you know, single episodes, like little mini episodes of shows they were thinking about picking up. It was like Cartoon Network's Cartoon Cartoon. They, they pretty much had served the same purpose, you know? Yeah, it was like showing off pilot episodes to the general public to see, uh, to gauge reaction for picking up shows. Yeah. Uh, so they showed SpongeBob on there. There was a SpongeBob uh, little promo episode on one of those. 
and I fucking loved it. And uh, a lot of, apparently it got amazing reviews, and that's why they decided to pick the show up as a full show. And now they won't let it die. And now they won't let it fucking die. Okay, real quick, let's talk mechanics. Uh, Spyro the Dragon is a 3D platformer collectathon, as that was popular at the time. Um, obviously inspired by Super Mario 64, but there's a lot more to this, and also a lot less. Yeah. See, as opposed to just doing random hey, objectives Spyro, around the levels to find the, the main collectible, which are the crystallized blood. frozen and, dragons, and you just gotta find Wait. them. Yeah. And some of the levels Falling are actually pretty well peaks. hidden. Yeah. I mean, like little alternate paths and glaciers? stuff. The second and third games would uh, expand upon the Mario 64 style by introducing a lot of mini games and mini challenges. And essentially just making the game out to be like every other 3D platformer. You yeah, know, but I still say Spyro had an air of uniqueness to it. Uh, Mainly in the level settings, because most games didn't do the sort of level settings that Spyro had. Yeah. Uh, the PS... The PlayStation really uh, shined as a 3D platforming game system in a big way that the... Whereas almost every 3D platformer that came out for the N64 was just, here's Mario with a different color of paint on it. Uh, the PlayStation really tried to do new things. Like, yeah. Crash Bandicoot's a 3D platformer that is nothing like other games in the genre, really. I mean... Uh, Crash Bandicoot was designed to be a 3D platformer with 2D platformer rules years and years before Mario would try it. Yeah, and they, they did it very well. And a lot of, most games on the PlayStation mimic Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. In fact, most uh, games that aren't Spyro. Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, or Metal Gear tried to mimic one of those three. Yeah. Like, uh, well, I don't know, it's going to kind of sound that way, but uh, one of the biggest PlayStation franchises of the era, which barely anyone ever talks, ever talks about anymore, was trying to emulate Metal Gear. That's Siphon Filter. Siphon Filter. Siphon Filter tried to be Metal Gear. And don't try to say that it wasn't. I mean, it was very much trying to be Metal Gear. Indeed. Um, and what we were saying about, uh, okay, back to mechanics. Uh, Spyro follows a very different sort of convention to, uh, to how it approaches your character. Because no other game really did a character that had this versatility of movement. Yeah. Yeah, the best thing to do would turn around. Yeah. Because Spyro can glide, he can go over long distances, and the level design reflects that. Mm -hmm. A lot of 3D stuff during this era was very, very clunky in a way that when you try to go back now, it makes it difficult to play them. Uh, like, even though I love the game, I will have to say that Ocarina of Time today, if you try to play the N64 version, does not control well. No, it doesn't. Uh, Especially if you're playing it on the virtual console. The controls it's, are it's, very snappy. It's Yeah, it's very uh, snappy, very clunky. The uh, Mario 64 on any sort of emulation has the same problem. Yeah, many games for the N64 era did that. Just don't uh, ha They don't have the gradual movement that the uh, original N64 analog stick provided. Yeah. Which is why people have gone about uh, creating a modified plug to use the GameCube controller on your uh, on your system, you know. Indeed. Which I, I want one of those so bad. Man, I was so excited when Super Smash Brothers came out for the uh, Virtual Console. Yeah. Because I was like, holy shit, I can play the original Super Smash Brothers with a GameCube controller. Yeah, it's so much better. Is that on the Wii U Virtual Console yet? Not yet. Oh, man. That sucks. 